Hey everyone, welcome to Constructed Chaos. Today we're going to be building a super fun character with some awesome voodoo vibes channeled into what I believe is one of the best monk subclasses ever, the Way of Mercy. I can hardly wait for you guys to meet him, so let's jump right into this. So for those of you who don't know, I live near New Orleans, Louisiana, which is a place full of lots of ghost stories and very creepy voodoo culture. Uh, because of this, I was hired for my cinematography skills to document a practitioner of the voodoo religion, and that ended up being the inspiration for this build. Now, in interviewing this local expert, I realized that the practice of voodoo, the creepy tourism stuff, is actually very different from what they practice, the religion of voodoo. You see, in voodoo, people mostly focus on contacting the good spirits, spirits that could influence the world of the living for the better. You could really think of them as spiritual healers. And I realized that their designation as such has pushed them towards a more monastic way of life. So inspired by this dual nature of life and death, I thought that playing a Way of Mercy monk would be a really interesting and less conventional way to represent the religion of Vodou. So to build this ultimate warrior of life and death, I decided to start with a green dragonborn. I did briefly consider using a lizard man or a kobold, but I like the idea of this creature being from the swamp and maybe he's got poison resistance that he's built up over a lifetime of testing out different concoctions. And the breath weapon was a nice added bonus. I would like to note that I took this opportunity to assign my character's racial bonuses outside of the typical strength and charisma scores. I'm a huge fan of Wizards making this an official option for playing the game in such a way where you don't have to worry about min-maxing your character and building them the most efficient based off the race that you pick. Now, if that's not the way that you like to play, fair enough. You can always go with something a little bit more efficient like an Aarakocra for your race. Uh, I think that an Aarakocra Vodou practitioner would actually be really cool. Uh, they get racial bonus inside of Dexterity and wisdom scores, which would work very well with this subclass. Um, I just thought that building a green dragonborn and making him a little bit more uh, monkey would be fun. So choosing monk as our base class, I thought it would be really fun to give this character, now named Umbresh, proficiency in acrobatics and religion. I would have given him insight instead of acrobatics, but we're gonna get that later for free anyway. I also gave him an added proficiency in alchemical tools. This Vodou practitioner has spent a lifetime concocting different potions and poisons, and so they would be naturally proficient with such tools. Then we'll give Umresh his Way of Mercy monastic tradition and things really get interesting from here. We'll level him up all the way to level 20 and just ignore the ability score improvements along the way since that'll largely depend on how you rolled. We'll also forgo most of the base monk class abilities, but if you're interested in that, we have a video discussing them right here. Starting at third level, we'll get our Insight, Medicine, and Herbalism kit proficiencies. We'll also gain a special mask as part of this subclass, but I chose to forgo it because it's mostly flavor. Umresh doesn't really strike me as a person that would wear a mask since, you know, he already has the face of a dragon. Also at third level, we'll get our Hand of Healing and Hand of Harm abilities, which are the cornerstones of this subclass. Hand of Healing allows you to spend a key point as an action and touch a creature to restore hit points equal to your martial arts die plus your wisdom modifier. Additionally, this feature can be used in conjunction with your flurry of blows and you may choose to replace one of the unarmed strikes without spending an additional key point. In the case of Umresh, I like to imagine that his Hand of Healing involves asking for the intervention of the good spirits in the afterlife, using his body as a conduit through which they can enact aid on his allies. Similarly, Hand of Harm allows you to spend one key point and deal necrotic damage equal to your martial arts die plus your wisdom modifier. However, you can't use this one with Flurry of Blows yet, and you can only use it once per turn. Umrash might be hesitant to use this ability too often anyway, at least from a roleplay perspective. As someone who communes so closely with the spirits of the afterlife, he might not want to allow the bad spirits to have so much influence over him. He may even view this as akin to allowing lightning to pass through his body and into his enemies. Oh, hey, sorry. I didn't mean to take you away from the video. Oh, this? This is just my birthday cookie. Uh, one second. Can you guess what I wished for? 
Physician's Touch allows Umrash to cure one disease, blindness, deafness, paralyzation, poison, or stun when he uses Hand of Healing. Additionally, Umrash can now use his Hand of Harm ability to inflict the poison condition on anyone that he hits until the end of our next turn. Yes, you heard that right, there's no saving throw on this. This ability combined with Stunning Strike could make for some really interesting combat encounters where your opponents spend just entire turns unable to do anything. Perhaps these abilities could be flavored as a more semi-permanent interaction with the spirits. They could easily be reinterpreted as a possession. Flurry of Healing and Harm gets unlocked at 11th level and further increases our Way of Mercy abilities. This feature allows us to use both attacks in a flurry of blows as Hands of Healing. It also gives Umrash the ability to use his Hand of Harm as one of his flurry of blows strikes without spending an additional key point. By this stage, our Dragonborn has nearly mastered his connection to his spiritual allies. Perhaps he even knows a few of them by name. He may even be so accustomed to becoming their medium that he no longer has to ask for their aid. Now nearing the pinnacle of our monk build, Umrash gains the ultimate Hand of Mercy at 17th level. This ability states that as an action, a creature that perished within 24 hours can be returned to life by expending 5 key points. They regain hit points equal to 4d10 plus our Wisdom modifier. This is a feature that can only be used once per day, however, so use it wisely. As we have now obtained every feature in the Way of Mercy subclass, Umrash finally begins to understand that good and bad, life and death, are all one and the same. A never-ending current in the flow of the universe that he only redirects as he chooses. We now approach the capstone ability for Monk, Perfect Self, which is a bit reminiscent for me of the Bard capstone ability in that it's not extremely useful. What it basically allows you to do is regain four key points whenever you enter a combat encounter and you have zero. This is not particularly useful unless you're running a session where you have a lot of back-to-back -back combat encounters before you have a short rest. Uh, it's even less useful for Monk, in my opinion, because you regain all your key points at 30 minutes of meditation during a short rest. It's for this reason that I actually made an alternate build that dipped a few levels of Warlock as opposed to taking the last three levels in Monk. The idea here, at least flavor-wise, is that Umrash came into contact with a particularly vile spirit that granted him the ability to use certain spells like Augury and protection from good and evil. Being able to use spells like Augury to cast a pouch of knuckle bones so as to ascertain the will of the spirits makes for some really interesting roleplay in addition to providing some interesting combat tools for our character. Some other spells and cantrips that you might want to take as part of this build include Chill Touch, Eldritch Blast, Suggestion, all spells that could be flavored in such a way that our Vodou practitioner is communing with the spirits and asking them to intervene in the world of the living on his behalf. And there you have it. Our badass Voodoo Monk build is complete. For what it's worth, I have taken Umrash into a few level 20 one-shots, and while he's not a min-maxer's dream, he is super fun to play. For those level 20 one-shots, our DM actually allowed us to take in one legendary magic item, and I chose the Blood Fury tattoo which made the character even more fun to play and maybe a little bit overpowered. If you're interested in that Blood Fury tattoo, I've also got a video on all the D&D 5e tattoos up here somewhere. <laughs> With that in mind, this is only one interpretation of the Way of Mercy Monk. You're of course free to use my character idea for yourself, but I'd invite you to interpret these abilities in your own way and give the subclass your own unique flavor. After all, creating a character with your own unique spin in D&D is half the fun. But I think that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to flurry of blows, the like and subscribe buttons, and until next time, go out there and make some chaos.